Well, welcome everyone to tonight's live stream. So glad you could join us. Let's just get the starting soon message off the screen here. Boom! Here we go. So, if you're joining us, please let us know where you're watching from. And we are now live. Doing things slightly differently today. We've got the game in digital form up here in the top left, as you can see. But as you can see, we've got the game physically laid out in front of you as well. And I'm joined by my lovely wife, Sarah Bradford. And today we're going to be discussing the very important issue of Islam. How to share the gospel with the Muslim. So if you're not familiar with uh, what we've been doing here, with the Armory Bible Game. The Armory Bible Game is a tool that people can use to teach the scripture in a fun and interactive way. And it's to help people remember the Bible and to use the Bible to share the gospel. And we've been going through different world religions, teaching apologetics. We've gone through Jehovah's Witnesses, Roman Catholics, and tonight we are tackling the important subject of Islam. So. We've got three arguments we're going to be going through and I'm just going to quickly pop them up and we'll go through them really quickly uh, before we dive in. So the first argument we're going to be looking at Leviticus and Psalm 51. We're going to be talking about the eternal justice of God. So we're going to, we're going to be coming back to this. I just want to give you a taste of what's coming up. Number two, we're going to be talking about Malachi 3.6 and the immutability of God and how this connects to the Trinity. So the immutability of God simply just means that God does not change. It's the Christian belief that God is eternally the same. And the third argument, we're going to be looking at Romans 10, verses 2 to 4, about true submission. What does it mean to truly submit to God? We're going to be looking at that later on today. So, Sarah, any thoughts on that so far? I think it uh, sounds good. Sounds good. Radio. So, last time... We looked at Roman Catholicism. So, Sarah, what I'm going to do with you is that if you can go through all of the arguments that we've covered so far with Jehovah's Witnesses and with Roman Catholicism, for each one you get correct, I will give you a piece of armor uh, before we even start the game. So, you could potentially be fully armored before we play uh, the, the armor game. So, okay. for those who aren't familiar, as you progress through the army, as you do attack, defense, and utility, Bible card challenges. You then put on the armor of God, which strengthens you as a player, and you battle and you fight sin. So we're going to start off by going through these arguments, and I'm going to award Sarah for each a correct argument that she gets right. Right. So let's start with Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. The first argument. Can you remember what it was? <laughs> Do I have to get them in order? Hmm. No, you don't. Okay. Okay. Could okay, bring one up. Okay. Um. So. Um. John eight fifty eight. Well done. Uh, where Jesus. Uh, in the true interpretation, he says, "I am," a clear reference to being God, but in the New World Translation, they have changed it to, "I've." become or something to downplay his deity um, but if you take a Jehovah's Witness uh, to their kingdom interlinear Greek uh, translation you can show them that in the Greek in their own bad translation it, it says I am so yes there we go. correct so you get one piece of armor so pick which one you want to for either one yeah either one okay well I suppose I suppose, I suppose the order is barred first, generally, Yeah, so maybe, isn't like, it? alternate. Go, like, one bar, one warrior. Yeah, so, so I'll go ahead and I'll take his soul-searching soul patch. Great. Okay, can you name uh, another one? Another argument? Um, another argument is... Okay, so it's the two together okay. from John and Isaiah. So John 12, 35 to 43, specifically focusing on verse 41 that right. um, uh, John is saying that Isaiah saw Jesus's glory, Jesus, that Isaiah spoke of Jesus. And if you go to what John is referring to, which is Isaiah 6, 1 to 5, yep. uh, 
Isaiah is in, um, uh, he's in the presence of Jehovah, of Yahweh, Jesus. So here we go. Great. And yeah, there's a footnote that connects that as well within the in New Testament. In their own, yeah, in their okay, own. Okay, remember the third. Translation. The third, um, again, two scriptures from Revelation. So it's oh, one on. eight, where Jesus said, on the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And then um, you go down, down to 117, and he says, um, to paraphrase, the one who was dead but now is alive. It says, no, sorry, um, it says Jehovah God. One of them says Jehovah God. Yeah, well, it's not, it's, it's just the implications that the first and the last is Jehovah. I think it's verse 7. It says it's 17. And then or verse, verse 8. Says, no, yeah, verse 8. Behold, yeah, brain. verse 8 says Alpha Omega. Or verse 17. I think verse 17 might say, says verse Jehovah 17, God. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's. Okay, so yeah, pick up uh, two. Read oh, right, okay. <laughs> right, okay. So I'll take my uh, Sword of the Spirit for the warrior. Shooting. And I'll take my lust repellent loot. Okay, Taking all the good stuff. Now, can you remember uh, the Roman Catholic? Arguments okay, the Roman time? Catholic arguments. Okay, so there's one from John eight again, which is thirty one to thirty two. Well done. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, and that is where Jesus is telling us to abide in His word. That we will know we are truly his disciples indeed and we know the truth and truth will set us free well done yes so Roman Catholics should read the word of God because Jesus said if you're my disciples you will read the word of God you will abide in my word and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free mm. argument number two can you remember pick some right? oh yeah pick up your armor yeah, my shield shield of faith yeah. right so okay so the next one is Romans 4 Verses one to eight. Yes, well done. <laughs> um, yeah, really good. I was, wasn't as familiar with this one. So that's basically, to paraphrase, Abraham, basically Abraham's justified by faith. And um, Paul is setting up this uh, argument for how we can't put a debt on God, that doing works is putting a debt on God. Mm -hmm. And that's linked to Job 41.11. Yes, what does Job 41.11 say? Um, Basically, that everything under heaven belongs to God. Yeah, who has preceded me that I should pay everything in heaven belongs yeah. to me. Yeah, so exactly. Can so we can do that absurd, and we can show the absurdity of what it is to try to put a debt onto God. Okay, and the last argument, Roman Catholics. As you know, pick up a piece of armor. Oh, it's a bard, is it? Bard. Right. I'll take up my mm, hat. The hat. Okay. Oh dear. Argument number three. Right. Okay. So that's Ephesians two, verse eight to ten. Well, okay. Well done. Um, that's pretty easy. And the focus, um, obviously, that's saying we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, uh, as a gift of God, um, not, not of yourselves, works. a gift of God, not of works, thus no one should boast. So we can't boast. And then also verse ten says that we are saved for good works in Christ so the argument that argument is obviously we're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone not by works so that we cannot boast and also we've we're saved for good works not by our good works well done pick up another piece of armor so by playing the armory Sarah has um, been able to learn those six arguments to talk with Roman uh, Roman Catholics and Jehovah's Witnesses and you find with a lot of these arguments they overlap because the cults and false religion all have the same problems. They also deny the same things. Yeah, yeah, so they overlap. So. As we talk about Islam today, you know, Islam denies the Trinity, so it's going to have the same problems as Jehovah's Witnesses. So you can use the same arguments that we've brought up in Jehovah's Witnesses uh, with a Muslim. Yeah. You just have to contextualize it. And it's the same uh, with Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is a works-based religion, so is Islam. So we can use the same... Um, scriptures mm -hmm. from Romans chapter 4 about putting it down to God with a Muslim. You can do mm -hmm. the exact same thing because they have the and, same and Abraham, problem. Because they obviously hold to Abraham being a prophet. Exactly. So, so you, you can see it. Yeah, very important. Focusing on Abraham. Um, so, but we're going to be looking at some different arguments, which again, you can, the arguments we bring up today about Islam, which is this one in Leviticus, Psalm 51, Malachi 3 6, and Romans 10. You can use those again with Roman Catholics and Jehovah's Witnesses as well. Okay, so Sarah, 
why don't we get started? Why don't you apply your arm benefits? Oh, okay. Uh, straight away. Cool. So you pick up an attack card. With the... All right, so I'm going to stay on top of this. So, so and the warrior has an attack card, which I just picked up, and we have a utility card for the bard. Boom, one, one the bar, one the bar, so far, one the bar. Okay, I'm gonna flip uh -huh. this round. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> Sarah can see the live stream. I can. I can see the so digital flip, game. Flip this card around. So, yeah. So if you're just joining us, let us know where you're from, and if you are a Muslim, please uh, tell us if yes. we are misrepresenting Islam in any way. We don't want to mis misrepresent Islam. We want to do a, a good job of uh, presenting it as it is and responding to it uh, from a Christian perspective, from a Christian worldview. Yeah. Right please say hi as well, right, so, whoever is watching. So we're now doing. Um, one attack, defense, one attack, defense, and utility card okay. challenge. Do you do you have my, my armor down there? I don't actually have your armor. So what do you have? You've so your... for the bard, I have my soul patch. Oh, and your hats, don't you? Yeah. And, oh. Soul patch, hat. Hi, Catherine. Sorry, I just had to say hi, Catherine. Oh, hey, Thank Catherine. you for joining us. Yeah, great. You could join us. Oh, um, what else do I have? Uh, my hat and my loot. Your loot. Boom. Okay, and then with your warrior, you've got... I've got my helmet, helm of salvation. Your sword and your shield. Yes. Look at that. Boom. Okay. So, why don't you start by doing an attack card? Okay. The... I'm going to actually flip these cards around. I'm doing an attack for... This for the bard? No. It's for either one. Bard. Yeah, either one. Bard. Okay. Question. Attack question. Game Master will ask you an attack question. I'll be awarded this card plus an additional one if I get this right and then if I get the bonus question right. So. Okay. So we are now looking at our Game Master pack. So click on attack. I'm trying not to look at the screen. What scripture in Leviticus can be used to demonstrate God's justice to a Muslim? Oh, goodness. This is going to show I was yeah. not paying attention. Okay. Leviticus 17. No. No. i just tell you because you're not going to get it right. It's Leviticus 24 verses 17 to 22. Okay. okay. Leviticus, which basically says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So the reason you want to bring this up with a Muslim is because Muslims generally have a an understanding of the justice of God and this is way, one way to illustrate that this is what this illustrates that if you damage someone you are damaged in return so you're demonstrating the justice of God that's what you want to use the scripture to demonstrate okay so if you sin there's a punishment there's a consequence and it's just it's perfectly just so that's that so sorry sir you don't didn't get that correct um, bonus was... question what is the result of sinning against God you're punished for it with a just punishment. Okay, and what is the duration of that punishment? Eternal. Eternal, right. And that that is where we're going to focus on, on this argument. But we'll explain it as we go. So sorry, Sarah, you don't get any attack cards. Well, well, well. So no, I'm not going to pick up any attack cards. So that was Leviticus 24, 17, 22. Yes, 17, 22, 24. A lot 17, of scriptures too. It is locked. Never mind. To get your head around. Okay. <sighs> now, defense. Defense. Right, right, right. Question. Defense question. Ask the game master to ask you a defense question. For a correct answer, I'll get this. And if I answer the bonus correctly, I'll get an, an additional one. Ooh, don't look at the screen. Hi, Mom. So glad you could join us. <laughs> right. Hi, Di. Where in the Bible is it stated that God does not change? Where in the Bible is it stated that God does not change? I, the Lord, do not change. Oh. Okay, I have to guess if you don't know. 
I'm trying to remember what was beside the Leviticus one. <laughs> That's it in your pack because <laughs> I spell check everything. Mm, I'm going to say Daniel. It's you know, Malachi 3.6, oh. woman. Okay. No, you don't get that. Okay. Malachi 3.6. Bonus question. This is why the bonus question exists, so that you don't get discouraged. <laughs> what is the name given to those who deny the Trinity? Unitarians. Unitarians, right. Unitarian. We have the right thing, right? So Islam is a Unitarian religion. So mm -hmm. That's why we're bringing this up. This is all going to make sense. We, we will explain this as we as we go along. Just bear with us. Malachi 3.6. Just want to fill it there are, what, What's the rest of the scripture? Malachi 3.6. Is yeah. Go to it. It says, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. So it's a way to understand the attributes of God. Because God does not change, we can trust Him. Okay. That the sons of Jacob aren't consumed because God is faithful to his covenants. Okay, so sorry, you didn't get any defense cards, not looking too good for you. But didn't I get the bonus? You did get the bonus, so well done. All right, so let's give you a bonus card here, a defense card. <laughs> there we go. Now you got a defense card. Okay, utility. Utility, right, sorry. I'm in my brain's in sleep mode. Right, question, ask. The game master to ask you to the question. Okay, Sarah, what does the word Islam mean? Um, submission. Well done, it means submission. Okay, bonus question. The word Muslim, what does that mean? One who submits. One who submits to God, yep. Okay, well done. Okay. So I pick up another? Yeah, so we've got two, two utility cards there. So you got three all together now. Yes, I do. Defense. One defense, two utility. Two, do you have three utility? Oh, yes, I do. See, yeah. Including, fine. yeah. So I'm keeping track of things too. That's good. Right, let's go to the warrior then. Should doing warrior. Attack. Attack. Shunk. Question. Okay, true or false? Muslims view King David as a prophet. True. It is true. So you get to keep that card. Yeah. Okay. Where in the Bible does King David confess to sinning directly against God? I know this one. That's Psalm 51, verse 4. Well done. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me go to that. Psalm 51, verse 4. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Okay, so this is what's going to connect Leviticus. Okay, we talked about God's justice. And then we have the prophet, David, confessing that his sins are directly a crime against God. And this is how this argument connects itself. So we get the Muslim to understand that God's justice is perfect. But then we have the prophet, King David, which Islam sees David as a prophet, confessing that his sins, his crimes, are directly against God. So then your question to the Muslim is, well, what does that, when you sin against God, who is eternal, what kind of punishment does that bring about and it is eternal it's eternal punishment and the reason this is important is because the islamic view of god's punishment is almost like a purgatory where mm. sinners go to hell for a time and if allah wills he plucks them out of hell but the, you can stress that that cannot be the case because god is eternal and he is perfect in justice so the punishment for sin is eternal so therefore you need a eternal remedy and We'll be, we'll, this is where you bring in the gospel of how Jesus is that perfect sacrifice for our sin. Mm, but what also ties in with that is um, the true biblical Christianity um, out of all of these religions is unique in um, the truth of the gospel of grace because it's the only, obviously because it's true, but it's the only um, religion, if you want to say, that has assurance of salvation found by grace. Because you're trusting Through in faith God in, alone, in Christ. not in yourself. Yeah, so the, the, the Muslim doesn't have assurance at, at any point, doesn't have assurance yeah. of salvation. And neither does the Roman Catholic or the Jehovah's Witness. Yes, and, exa and it's just as you said that um, um, it's almost like an arbitrary... Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's arbitrary. It's up to Allah. Allah can you know just send people to hell if if he wants and then just pluck him out it's it's um it's very uncertain right so that is leviticus 24 17 22 and psalm 51 verse 4 
explaining the eternal justice of God. So that's important to remember. Okay, so we just did uh, attacks. You get two attack cards, don't you? Yes. Okay, so let's give you two attack cards. So I, I take another one, do I? I do. Yes, you got three all together now. Yeah. All right, so now you want to do a defense oh. card. Defense. Okay. All right, scripture reference. Okay, so this is where I read out a scripture and then Sarah has to tell me where it's from. So let's see if you remember this. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Okay, so that's the, will I start? Sorry? Will I start? Yeah. Yeah. It's the Old Testament. Correct. It's Book of Malachi, chapter Correct. 3, verse 6. Well done. So you get two defense cards for that. Great. Just think, I just want to turn these cards around so we can actually read what's on the back of them. On the bar. Okay, utility. Utility, right. So, question. Okay. According to Romans 10, verses 2 to 4, what does those who seek to establish their own righteousness not do? Can you repeat that? According to Romans 10, verses 2 to 4, what do those who seek to establish their own righteousness not do? Submit to God. How? Yeah, that's partially, partially right. What don't they submit to? What element of God don't they submit to? Sorry, can you just repeat that question so I can try and see if I can get okay. this right? According to Romans 10, 2 to 4, what do those who seek to establish their own righteousness not do? Um, okay, so I said submit to God. Which is correct, but partially what correct. What aspect of God is what you're wondering? Yeah. To his... Righteousness slash well just okay, yes. Yes. okay. <laughs> submit to the righteousness of God. Winging okay. it. <laughs> so that was pretty dodgy. I'm gonna get, let you draw a master's card, okay, to determine if you get that. Oh, one. okay. Sorry, sorry right. Not. So if you draw above four or above, you get to keep. You get to draw. God. It's a hard task, master. Right. It? Oh, right. draw cheating. Oh, oops. Actually, both of those are below the. Oh, the okay. Mark, so yeah, there you, you go. Get it. That's, That's okay. <laughs> right here. Bonus question. What scripture states that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to those who believe? Romans 10, 2 to 4. Yes, correct. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's verse 4, okay. specifically. But if, you, if, you quoted, if you quoted that, you would have got the, uh, the reference anyway. So yes, you get one utility okay, card. Okay, that, that, was, that was just a guess. Okay, so let's give you a utility card here. Boom! Okay, so now we are into the game. So let's get mm -hmm. the bard up here. Armor. Right. What armor? So I get a. Uh, Pick up a defense card here. Utility? Oh, and a defense. Oh, I didn't pick up a defense and, that and first utility. time. Oh, so I needed yeah. to pick. I need to pick up another. Okay, so, I didn't so you gotta up. pick up a defense card here. So you should have two defense cards now and. Or four utility cards? Yeah, well, shouldn't I have three defense cards? Because I... Okay, yeah, sure, I'll give you three defense cards. You didn't do it the one time. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move this card here so you can see it a bit better. So you've got the mental foolish. Oh, wait, sorry. We we have to do challenge first. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Challenge. So you're going to do attack, defense, or utility. Um, I'm going to do a, hmm. Defense, I reckon. Do you think? I'm going to tell you how to play. But... I suppose. Or you could try to attack, try for some more. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I'll just pick. I'll. Sure, I'll go with defense. Okay, okay question. Defense. Okay. 
What does it mean for God to be immutable? It means that he doesn't change. Well done. Okay, so you get a defense card. So let's give you a defense card here. Shh, wink. Okay, you pick Your up, face you, looks terrified. What? <laughs> what? I look terrified. I'm like that. <laughs> Catherine said attack! <laughs> Right, so next time you'll have to do an attack. Uh, I will maybe do an attack for you yeah, next yeah. time, Castle, depending on what's going on. All right. Bonus question. How does the doctrine of the Trinity relate to the immutability of God? This is a really open question, but I suppose uh, but because he would have always been a Trinity because he doesn't change. Yeah, what does that do? What, the, what, what attribute of God does that? What attribute? Oh. What does that mean? What does it mean that God's been a trinity? How does that affect? Um, well, it means that he's relational. He's a, he's a covenant yes. God. Okay, well done. So, yes, boom. Now let's talk about Malachi 3.6 and the importance of this with Islam. As we stated, Islam... Uh, do I get that? Do yeah, you did. Yeah, okay, good. do I get a bonus? Or? Yeah, Sorry, your bonus card, yeah. Sorry, okay. I do? Do I? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Okay, so let me just describe this then for for people. Right, so Malachi 3.6. We've discussed that Islam is a religion that is Unitarian. So you can see here Unitarian right here. Which means they don't believe that God has existed eternally as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as Christians do. They believe that God is just by himself. And the problem of this, it means that if that is the case, and this is, this is the same for Jehovah's Witnesses because they don't believe, they believe that Jesus is not God. They believe that he is a created being. The problem in this is that destroys the immutability of God and, and it is a rejection of Malachi 3.6 because before God created anything, he existed by himself alone, which means he was impersonal. There's no one with for him to communicate with so for then for him to then create creatures and then to reveal divine truth to them and have a relationship with them he then has to fundamentally change his nature he has to move from being impersonal to personal which means that he changes his nature which means he's not immutable whilst the biblical view and the christian view is that god has eternally existed as father son and holy spirit has eternally been in uh, uh, relational and in communion so that when he does create his creatures and he does reveal his truth through prophets and holy men and how he can have a relationship with people he doesn't have to change his nature because he's always been personal he's always so that is very very a very powerful way to argue with a jehovah's witness and a muslim so that is malachi 3 6 the immutability of god slash the importance of the trinity so mm. I'll just mention that um, ladies at our church, are, we're going through a book at the moment. I'm pretty sure it's called Why We Pray. And I can't remember the author's name, but that was his whole argument for really the first chapter. Why we pray, why we communicate with God, because God is a speaking God. And God is a speaking God because by nature he's, uh, he's a trinity and uh, he's a covenant God. He's a relational God because he's, he is that within himself. So that's... It's interesting that yeah so we bring that up Dei, we uh imitate our creator we do life. that's why we speak to one another okay so that is let's where are we so that's trade no we haven't traded okay benji what's up so glad you could join us again hey benji on your tv wow yeah it's cool right <laughs> I'm glad that you can enjoy watching on your TV and using your phone. It's not like a pretty, it's like it's a pretty cool setup. remote. Okay, so we are on abilities. Boom. So let's make this big screen. Okay. Abilities. What abilities can you do? I've got loads of like different. You've got lots of cards. I've got lots of cards. So. I think you should do a Psalm of the Swift, which costs three utility yes, cards. Yes. But I was kind of hoping I could use out of encouragement but no one has lost any health points yet so yeah so i think you need to sum swift first for anyway and then i'll have even more defense and cards. you've actually you're actually maxing out on defense cards i so, am so it means you're going to get a fortitude yeah which isn't the worst thing yeah so i think you should do that go for psalm of the swift so psalm of the swift says your epic lyricism causes all players to fight the good fight all players pick up one 
utility card. So you're going to do that? Sure. Right, so let's give this one utility card to the warrior. And you lose three. Oh, but you've got one there because you have four. Oopsie, stink. And you pick up two defense cards, so right there. So well, I'll just pick up one, and I'll trade one in for force two. Yeah, so let's do that. You pick up one. So right now you're max defense, and we're gonna get fortitude, which means you cannot lose health Can points. Can you pass me a little fortitude thing, would you agree? Okay, Karen? so let's move this Please. down. You got fortitude. Let's do that right there. Oh, that's a card. What's happening? Can I have an IRL? Can you have a what? In real life. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm all cool. Here's the card in real life. IRL. Ooh. Oh, stretch. There we go. <laughs> we have a long table. Right, there we go. Fortitude. You cannot lose health points on this turn. Wow. Okay, so it is now boss card. Boss card, boss card. Oh. Boss card. Okay. Not boss too card. Because you can't uh, which one, points. again, furthest it's from me? the furthest one, yes. Furthest, okay. Take the bins out, which you know. did that, so <laughs> you're organized today, right? Leech of Doom. Ooh. Uh, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Second Thessalonians three ten. A tentacle feeds off you. You suffer minus one health point. The boss also gains a health point. Add this card to the bottom of the boss health point pile. But I've got fortitude. You got fortitude, so you Stink. don't use a health card health point but you still need to put that card yes the so of the he still he still gets yeah, a so point, but i don't lose one stronger which isn't too bad no okay, at least so i didn't lose a health point this, that fortune is gone right so now we are on the horia right armor, armor. so so we can see here you get one attack card uno okay okay uno. and that's it from your armor. Wow. Okay, challenge. Attack, defense, <laughs> or utility. Mm. I think you should just do attack and hit this boss really hard. As Catherine said, attack! Attack! Hmm. So. Ah, uh, sure. Okay. Well, mm. So if we get your, your All right. player card here. I, I will in a... In, in your honor, Catherine, I will do an attack challenge. Okay, great. Right. Scripture memory. Ooh. Okay. okay this requires my Bible. In, in 20 seconds. Ooh, I'm going to get you to memorize Malachi 3.6 because that is a really important scripture to memorize. Okay, Malachi 3.6. Sarah, you ready? You've got 20 seconds to memorize it. And okay. Then you must say it back to us. Right. So let me let me let you know when I've. Right. Oh no! Wait, the part of this challenge is finding it, isn't it? No, 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 no. It's not. Oh no! It's reciting it. Sorry, it's I'm getting confused. You need to find it ASAP. Okay. Ooh. Malachi three six. For I am the Lord; I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. I love the book of Malachi. It's a great book. I'm gonna try to say it in my most epic voice that I can. Three. For okay, found it. Lord. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Three, two, one, go. 20 seconds. Got right here. I really need to get a timer. Like, put it on the screen. And time! Woman. Closed. Close it. Now, we slide it. Close. For I, the Lord, do not change. Uh, <laughs> this is why you, O oh, children of Jacob, are not consumed. Yeah, okay. And what is the reference? Malachi 3 6. Okay, so you get two. You get two ones. Well done. I blame you, Di. You threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> I blame my mother. <laughs> Joke. Right. I've got the long term memory of a goldfish. I've got. You see, okay. all that, it's from uh, secondary school, all that cramming before exams. Paid off. Paid off, yeah. It's like <laughs> overstimulated that part of your brain. <laughs> yeah, like, like can cram really it. well and then it just disappears. Just goes. So are you going to trade? Um, gonna oh, what do I get for that? Do I get an extra? You, you get two attack cards. Okay. So are you going to trade one or are you going to take 
Two. Oh, thanks, Doc. <laughs> so sweet. All right, you're gonna take you're gonna take two, are you? Uh, sure, why not? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six. You've got six, so you're maxed out. On... Yeah. So I might may as well do two truth swipes. Okay, you do that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, so hang on. Let's do, go one by one. So do the first one. Okay. Right. So. So I'm going to remove these three. One, two, three. And truth swipes here, it says the truth can hurt, remove three uh, three boss cards, remove another three next turn, and you must hold two utility cards, which she does. And she must hold uh, number two, which is this card itself, which is the warrior's sword of the spirit. And you must pick up three defense cards. So let's pick up those three defense cards. One. We're actually, um, we've only got one defense card left in the pile. But you can only hold six. And you're pretty max. That's why you can only hold six, because you, oh. run, you run out of cards. There you go. Right, yo. So, now you also have to draw a master's card, because you get this item effect. Whenever you do an attack ability, draw a master's card. With a draw of four six, you do you remove an extra health point from the boss. You must hold one attack card, which currently holding three so let's do that let's draw okay shuffle this okay draw oh, oh no nothing okay so okay. let's do truth swipes again boom 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 now you can only pick up one no yeah you can only pick up one whoopsie and then you get fortitude as well. Yay. Okay. So now you could actually do every block if I wanted to. Yes, I do because I want to forge some more armor. So. Okay, so every block says this. Your shield quenches the burning attacks or temptation. Next time your friend takes damage, you will shield the attack. So you pick up four utility cards. We're doing that. So we get four. One. Okay. Well, actually, I'll just take up one because I'm going to forge armor. Okay. So what she's just done now, she's going too fast. She's forging Sorry. armor, which costs three utility cards, and you pick up an armor card. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to remove three. What armor card you can pick up? I'm gonna pick up my pants. Pants. That's yeah. Pants. Oh, you can't say pants in England. That's uh, rude. Your trousers. Yes, they they think you mean knickers when you say pants. But in Ireland, when we say pants, it me can mean trousers. It means both, right? And the cool thing is, you actually pick up another tag card for doing that. So let's pick up another tag card. You can forge on again, you? actually. You... Well, I don't want to. Have... Oh yeah, then you can't attack. Yeah. Let's see. So. So, are you gonna do a Bible bash? Because you've got one more attack card now. She has Bible bash for those. Must hold one. Sure. And two, two so it strikes when you're the boss. Then you pick That's up one fence good. card. Well, let's do it. Oh wait, hang on. Before you do it, you first need to do epic block. Oh, okay. Well, I've already. All right. Yeah, I've already got, taken everything for that. Oh yeah, so how many how many do you lose? How many, how many defense cards do you currently have? Well, I already gave everything away. That I've oh, got so two left. Done, you've already done four. Okay. Yeah, and I, I... need them. All right, so you can't actually do epic block. My bad. Yeah, go ahead. I forgot to delete your cards. I already did epic block. Yeah, you've done epic block. So you want to do um, truth, Bible bash then? Yeah, Bible bash. It probably, it probably sounds like we're speaking gibberish to people. <laughs> We need a geeky voice. When you've done my bobast, you say, right now you need a truth block. When you've got three attack cards. I pick up a defense. That's my. Pick up uh, one defense card. My, my nerdy voice. Right, so I'm going to put this defense card on the table here just to remind us that we have epic block in play. Okay. 
Uh, so you, I'm you, doing too well in this. <laughs> well, just because well, it's because we started. We need some with, really with yeah yeah. We need we need some really difficult boss cards. Right. So boom. Let's delete this attack card, and you pick up a defense. You got three defense cards currently. Yes. And three okay, utility. So that was that was a, a lot of abilities. Let's get a boss card. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Boss card. Okay. Fiendish fury, a fool's wrath is presently known but a prudent man covereth shame proverbs twelve sixteen, the furious tentacle creature's eyes dilate at the sight of you and becomes furious flailing its tentacles it ravenously attacks draw a master's card one to two a tentacle hits me and i lose a health point three to four a tentacle hits the player who has their turn after you uh or five to six a tentacle hits no one okay so because we have epic block on play, it's not going to do damage to anyone. But if you get the roll where it doesn't hit anyone, epic block will still be in play. So, draw. Three, what's that? So, tentacle hits the player that has their turn after you. Okay, okay. So, it, so it hits the bard, but you epic block it. So, okay. I'm going to yeah, delete, delete this from the table now. And I got rid of Fortitude. Yeah, you don't have Fortitude anymore because your turn is over. And boom! We're now back to the Bard. Armor. Okay, so you pick up one defense card. But you have max defense. So, Fortitude? You get Fortitude. Ooh. Bang. Okay, and you get one utility card. Utility. Okay, well, I'm gonna do attack because I have oh, or will I do utility? I'm gonna do attack and try to forge some armor. Try to forge some armor right here. Scripture memory. Scripture memory. Okay. In my bubble again. I'm gonna do. Um, let's do Psalm fifty-one verse four. Okay. Ready? Oh, so I find it, don't I? Yeah, fine. Psalm 51, verse 4. So, if you guys want to share any uh, Islamic arguments yourselves, please do so in the comments. Let us know of some scriptures that you would share with a Muslim while Sarah memorizes the scripture. Ready? All right, okay. All right, three, two, one, go. Look at this. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgments. Well done. Yeah, you're using the ASV, so it's slightly different. Psalm than, yeah, 51 4. Psalm 51 4. Well done. Okay, so you get two attack cards for that. Okay. Run the bar. Okay, let's throw this here. Radio. Okay, so we've done challenge. You're not gonna bother trading abilities then. You can't do any abilities, can you? What a strange predicament. Yes, I can't do any abilities. Can't do any abilities. Okay, so it's boss card. Okay. Boss. Okay. Flailing tentacle of peril. The lot is cast into the lap. But the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Proverbs sixteen thirty three. The furious tentacled creature furiously flays its tentacles. All players draw a master's card. The player with the lowest draw suffers a health point. Okay, mm. so this actually could do some, some damage. excitement. Well, not to me because I have fortitude. That was true, and you've got the shield on the warrior, so you're pretty well defended. So you join for the barn, are you? Yeah. Okay, five. five. Okay. Okay, so the warrior. 
But then you've, you've got your I shield. Got my shield, so which your... says when damaged, pick up a master's card. If you pick up four to six, you will block the attack and take no damage. You have to hold one defense card, which. Yeah, I've got those. You apparently hold three. So. I'm very impressed by your keeping on top of everything. It's handy, I know where you are. I'm not lost, yeah. I'm not relying on you all the time. Well done. Oh. Locked it. I'm kind of hoping I want to leave the health fate. point. <laughs> That's okay. So the reason Sarah has so much armor before we started is because we quizzed her as a recap, or well, I quizzed her as a recap, of the different arguments we've covered in this series of apologetics. You can check those out on our YouTube channel. We've got one on Jehovah's Witnesses and one on Catholicism. And she recited them all. So she got quite a lot of armor. I'm the guinea pig, so. So, radio. so now we're on the warrior. Armor. Let's do this. So two attack cards. Whoopsie. Okay. This fortune's gone. Right, so we've challenged now. Oh, so no, we've got to remove six boss cards from the previous turn. Okay. I should have used this attack increase here to uh, demonstrate that. So Sarah's <laughs> taking. Okay, the boss has one health point left. <laughs> so who knows what's going to happen because this boss can bounce back somehow. Well, you've got two attack cards, so the game's technically open now. I suppose. But do your challenge. Yeah, um, okay. Do your utility because you haven't done utility. Sorry, sure, utility I'll do. Again. Yeah, that's a good idea. Question. Okay. According to Romans 10, 2 to 4. What do those who seek to establish their own righteousness not do? Submit to God's righteousness. Well done. Okay. So what scripture states that Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to those who believe? Romans 10, 4. So we already haven't explained this one. Well done. So you get another utility card. Okay. So we're looking at 2 to 4 here. So this is what Romans 10, 2-4 says. This is why this argument is really important. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone who believes. Now, Paul mm. here is talking about the Jews. However, the same philosophy applies to Judaism and using works-based religion as it does to Jehovah's Witnesses. Roman Catholics, Mormons, and Islam. And the reason you want to focus on this is because he used the word submitted. And as we look from this pack, the word Islam means submission, submission to God. And a Muslim is one who submits to God. So you can, you can challenge a Muslim and plainly say, do you submit to God? And if they say yes, and, and if they don't submit to the righteousness of God, which is found in faith in Jesus Christ. They're not submitting to God. So you can bring him here and say, look, the, the messenger of God, the apostle of, of God, Paul, the messenger of God, says that to submit to God means to trust Jesus Christ for righteousness. Are you doing that? And that's the way you can then preach the gospel. So that is the, the third and last argument. So um, let's finish this game off. So we're not going to trade do abilities. Right, well, then, we'll, then we'll conclude. I'm going to forge armor. Oh, she's forging armor. Drawing it out. Oh, yeah. Why not? Like, Why kill Sim when you can kill it in style? <laughs> exactly. Right, so I'm going to pick up my boots of peace. Boots of peace. And I get another defense card. Yeah, boots of peace. I just need a. Right. Boom. There you are. Flip it over for you. Right. It says pick so... up additional defense card. Right. So, may as well do epic block. So I got four. 
sure. Okay, so she's epic blocking. She's, epic she's blocking. throwing out. Throwing it. In it. Okay. I'm gonna forge so, armor again. And then she picks up four, but I'll just draw one because she's gonna forge armor, which costs yeah. three here. So. And you can actually forge armor again. Well, that you've got all your armor now. I have. Oh, you've, you've got the I'm full one armor of God. short from doing heroism. <laughs> oh no! I was so excited because last time I got to do the Ballad of Beauty for the Bard with my full armor, which I've never done before. And I can't do heroism now, which I haven't done before because I'm missing a utility card. But that's okay, that's and life. You also are awarded <laughs> another half point. So when you pick up. The, the breastplate of righteousness, the warrior's breastplate, you actually gain an additional health point, which is represented by this card with the yellow border. Do you have it? border, which represents the breastplate card. So you've got four health points now. I designed a t-shirt where I um, have that in a t-shirt. The warriors, all the warriors' health points. We do. I can show you that right now. So if we go to the army bible game, go down to store, go all the way down to merch, pick on the store that's relevant for you, boom, here it is. Right there. So that's what that represents. I have that top. Warriors health. It's nice. Health points. I'll turn it on. So is... we've also added some uh, posters to uh, the store. So it says a fool puts trust in himself. It's like a plug plugged into itself. So it's, it's punny. Okay, so. Now you, you have to attack. <laughs> yes, now I'll attack. Okay, so you're going to do a bubble bash. But uh, that's encouraging to hear, Catherine, that uh, makes you want to reason with people more. Um, well, that's the thing that I found with um, the pack for Jehovah's Witnesses and, and for Roman Catholics, but I felt a bit more equipped because they're not hugely, hugely in depth. Obviously, there's a lot more points you could. Uh, uh, pick up with Jehovah's Witnesses or Islam apart from the ones in the packs, but they're just a nice basic just, just the arguments are uh, I find they're easy to remember they're a primer. Yeah, they're they're a primer But they're so, enough to have a conversation with them. Definitely. Person, that's what you really want. But I suppose this do. is the purpose like we're just doing a really kind of breezy playthrough of this and it's not normally how the game kind of plays out, but uh, I suppose the purpose of this is just to share, um, to encourage the saints to do exactly that, to reason with people as it is encouraging me. So, glad yeah. to hear. So let's finish this game, then we'll wrap up. Right, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to attack. So I might as well just do a Bible bash. Okay, so Bible bash, cost one. Bible bashing. And that's... Boom. It. Boom. So you want to show the uh dead he's dead yeah no more health points he's dead so there we go game over now when the game's over the game master which is the player i'm playing can present a quest and this is the quest for this pack it says quoting the quran congratulations you've defeated this foe and forged armor now you must complete the following quest at hand quest objective muslims will often say the bible cannot be trusted because it has been corrupted or has been changed or it's not trustworthy this statement is refuted by the Quran, which states that the Bible is a previous revelation of God and that God's words cannot be changed. Memorize Surah 6, 114 and Surah 6, 115. Quote this to the Game Master next time you play the Army Bible game and you'll receive this reward, just three attack cards and might. And if you click this, this is these are links to the actual Quran. Ooh, allow. So it's opening up the Quran. And this is what it says, uh, the word has been fulfilled in justice, none can alter his words. So right there in the Quran it says that uh, the Bible is a previous revelation of God, 114 here, let's just open that up. Let's see, uh, what is, this is 115, so 114 is here, it says, then it is other than Allah I should seek as judge, well, it is he who has revealed to you the book explained in detail and those to whom we previously gave the scriptures know that it is sent down from your lord in truth so never be among the doubters so the book that's referred to here is the bible it's talking about the previous 
scriptures. So you can say to a Muslim, by like showing them in the Quran, so 614, that the Quran says that the Bible is the word of God. And then they say, oh, it's been corrupted. You just go to the next verse in the Quran, and it says, none can alter his words. So that is a hook, line, and sinker into the objection that the Bible has been corrupted. And then you just bring up all the scriptures that we've just brought up, which Leviticus 24, 17, and 22, which talks about an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, you explain the justice of God. And then you bring in Psalm 51, verse 4, which talks about King David saying that to God and God alone, that he sinned against, and that your sins against an eternal being result in eternal punishment. And that's why you need Jesus, who is the perfect sacrifice of God. Malachi 3, 6, I, the Lord, do not change. You can talk about the immutability of God, how God has to exist as three persons as revealed in the Bible, and that God cannot exist as a, in the Unitarian idea uh, because it is self-refuting by nature. It's illogical. Argument number three, Romans 10, verse 2 to 4, talks about true submission, which is submitting to the righteousness of God, which is found in Jesus Christ alone. Boom. I was actually just while you were saying that, trying to see if I could remember <laughs> the scripture references. Oh, yeah, okay, so let's see if you can remember. Oh, dear. Okay. Argument number one, go. Leviticus 21. 24. Oh, 24, uh, 17 uh, to 21. <laughs> uh. That's why I was like spaced. I was like, oh, goodness, which, which chapter is it in Leviticus? <laughs> you did this to yourself, Sarah. I wasn't going to do this. Leviticus um, 24, 17 to 22. 17 to 22, okay. And Psalm 51, verse 4. Well done. It's the first argument, that, which um, establishing God's justice. And the second argument is Malachi 3, 6. Well done. Um, God doesn't change. Mutability of God. You bring that in with the Trinity. Yep, well done. Um, and then argument 3. I'm going to argument 3, am I? 10, 2 to 4. Well done. Is that Christ is the end of righteousness. For... Yeah, it talks about true submission. Yeah, right. true submission. That's right. True submission and then Christ being the end. Wonderful. Of so, uh, let me just show you this. So, we've got these three Game Master packs that can be downloaded from the store. They're all here. And um, you can also pre-order the Army Bible game. It's going to be shipped June 1st, which is pretty soon. It's going to be a couple of weeks. So you hit pre-order. You can then uh, purchase the game here. There's also different packs that you might want to look at that come with it. So, if you have any questions, let us know. Make sure to check out the other live streams that we did on Jehovah's Witnesses and our own Catholicism. We are going to be doing one more before we release the game, which is going to be doing one on Mormonism. Da, da, da. Um, so God willing that will be next week so let us know if you have any questions and we're just going to chat for a little while before we wrap things up okay well you're also one thing that was interesting when we were discussing worldviews to cover I, I thought that kind of covering broadly the new age would be very helpful um, because to death because uh, we were talking about Ireland uh, in particular and what do Irish Christians face in the world, in, well obviously in the world as in people who aren't Christians, what generally are, are the worldviews that we face. So and, and predominantly it is a secular Roman Catholic New Agey mindset. So comment if you agree or disagree. But in my experience, the New Age has penetrated secular humanism so the two of them pretty much gen generally I, I mean new age in kind of broad terms and you know like uh, reincarnation or um meditation mindfulness these sorts of things they're just embraced by the secular world and the typical irish person would have a would um be a kind of secular i i believe secular new agey roman catholic if you want to put it in a box um, uh, people who would embrace secularism some new age views and then would have a roman catholic understanding of christianity so when you're speaking to them about christianity generally that they're interpreting it um, with their roman catholic upbringing 
So that's why I think it would be very interesting to um, kind of tackle these new age uh, views because the amount of people in, you know, family or friends who, you know, just talk about mindfulness or, you know, the amount of people you might talk to um, who um, kind of just assume reincarnation is true without actually saying reincarnation, you know, I, I think, I think that's something that we find a lot in Ireland. So comment if you think that is the case. So, CD, Vacanti, I don't know how to say your name. I don't understand how you can say a movement is of the devil and heretical when it was about going to God's word and reading it and proclaiming it, which Jesus commanded in John 8. What was it, Sarah? John 8, 34? John 8, 34. Two to thirty-four. John eight thirty-one to thirty-two. That's thirty-one to thirty-two. Which Jesus said, "If you are my disciples, you will abide in my word, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free." And Roman Catholicism systematically outlawed the reading of God's word. So you tell me, which one is of the devil? <laughs> okay. Okay, Catherine. Today at work, my colleagues. How many? Humanistic wedding. Mm. Mm, yeah. Yeah, a lot of humanism. But they'd kind of also be nominally Roman Catholic because, you know, if you're talking to them about Christian things, the way they're interpreting it is with a Catholic view. So. Oh. Um, sorry, is it CD? I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm, I don't want to mispronounce it, but um, I would just respectfully ask that if you are um, a humble person and that you are a reasonable person and you want to reasonably dialogue with us, please read the book of Ephesians. Um, it's very clear from that book written by the Apostle Paul that uh, we are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of works, so that we cannot boast, um, which is a direct, directly opposed to what uh, Roman Catholicism teaches, which is that we are saved by God's grace, but also through our works. And that's just a lie. It's, that's not biblical. So please read the book of Ephesians and... Uh, Read the Gospel of John. Read the book of Romans. It is so clear from the Bible that uh, we're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, which is the heart of Protestantism. But uh, that's just the true gospel. It's not necessarily just Protestant. And then I encourage you to look at Romans 4 verses 1 to 8 and compare it with Job 41, 11. And ask yourself, is it possible to be saved by works? Is it possible to put a debt onto God so, such that he owes you salvation? Because that's what essentially what trying to earn salvation through good deeds is like doing. It's like trying to put a debt onto God so that he says, all right, I, I have an obligation now to give this person salvation when it's clear that everything under heaven belongs to God and that salvation can only be a gift of God solely by his grace, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, to the glory of God alone, so that no man can boast. And then finally, look at Ephesians 8, as Sarah said, and particularly look at verse 10. It says that Christians are saved for good works, not by good works. So good works are present in the life of a Christian, but they're the result of salvation. They're not the way of salvation. Jesus is the way of salvation. John 46, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me, not through the Roman Catholic Church, not through the saints, not through Mary, through Jesus Christ alone. Has, hashtag preach. Um, CD, I, uh, we have an email that uh, you can contact us on because if, uh, and I, I put this respectfully, um, but if you 
don't think that um, it's a Catholic teaching that you earn your salvation, then I'm afraid that that's simply opposed to what Roman Catholics teaches and you may not have a proper understanding of Catholicism if that is the case. And I put that respectfully because it's, it's true from um, Roman Catholic uh, dogma, dogma, their doctrines, their canons that uh, you earn, uh, you have a part in earning salvation. And I encourage you to email us because we won't be able to, if you are truly searching and if you truly want to have a respectful dialogue with us on this and you're willing to properly deal with the scriptures because I would say to you that um, these scriptures that you're quoting to us, you're taking them out of context. And well, you're misapplying. This is not talking yeah. about the Roman Catholic Church. It's clearly talking about a local church. You know, the Roman Catholic Church didn't exist in this capacity. There was no popes. There was no bishops at this point. So Jesus is clearly talking about a local level. You first go to your brother who's sinning against you, and then you bring two witnesses, and then you bring them before the local assembly. It's not talking about the universal Roman Catholic Church with the infallible popes and the Mary worship and all these, all these yeah. other things. Yeah, there's a way, I'm sure that you would agree, there's a way to hand, properly handle the scriptures. And um, if we are going to discuss this subject, you have to be willing to actually look at the scriptures in context. And that's why I'm saying to you, please email me, sarah at the armorybiblegame.com. And um, I gladly have a discourse with you. You explain to me how you believe that Roman Catholicism doesn't teach that uh, we're, we contribute to our justification. And I will show you how that is exactly what Roman Catholicism teaches. I am an ex-Roman Catholic. Um, I can share with you exactly how from their own dogma, that's exactly what they teach. And I can show you from the Bible how that is not what God says. And it is... Um, so important because this depends on your eternal salvation and if you are not trusting in Christ alone for your salvation then you are apart from Christ and uh, you need the gospel you need to uh, repent and turn to Christ and trust in Christ alone so please email me because uh, so it works So he's, he's quoting the Council of Trent, or she, I don't know who, you know, you know, Council of Trent, Canon 9. But this is what Paul the Apostle says, who is a higher authority, he says, But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches another gospel to you than that we have received, let him be accursed. And that gospel is found in the writings of Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10. I encourage you to look at that and, and honestly think is that the gospel I do I believe Ephesians 2 8 to 10 do I is does do I actually practice and believe that? Well see look if you are really concerned about us and you think that we're on the road to eternal condemnation email me uh, email me and we'll have a discourse about this because I'm I'm um, sir or madam sorry I don't know who you are but I um, mean this with love uh, you're very wrong and um, it, what you just quoted there from the Council of Trent it's not saying what you're making it out to say what it is actually saying is um, that Roman Catholics teach that you need the grace of God and your works it's both that's what they teach but that's uh, directly opposed to what the Bible teaches so if you are concerned about us that um, we're in danger of eternal condemnation please email me and um, I would love to have a discourse with you on this sincerely. So yes, so. James 2 verse 24, I absolutely agree that true Christians will have works, but they're not the means and not the way in which they are um, made Christian. Because if that's the case, then they can boast. And then you've got a problem mm -hmm. with Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10, which clearly says no man can boast. You have a problem with Job 41 verse 11 and Romans 4 verse 1 and 8, which clearly says you cannot put a debt onto God. So you have to see the scriptures as a whole. You can't just get one little scripture, take it out of its context and say, ah, oh, there we go, I'm going to base my entire theology on this one verse. You have to say, what does the entire scripture, it's called systematic theology. So yeah. I encourage you to search the scriptures, be a Berean, 
okay? Paul the Apostle commended the, uh, the Bereans, they're more noble than the ones in Thessalonica, that they openly received new ideas, but they searched the scriptures daily to see whether these things are so. So I encourage you to search the scriptures. Look at these scriptures, right? Look at John 8, 31 to 32, where Jesus clearly says, if you are my disciple, you will read the Bible. Do you read the Bible? Do you read it every day? Is it your, your spiritual food? Do you meditate on it day and night? Okay. Romans 4, verses 1 to 8, and Job 41, 11, okay, very clearly states that you cannot be saved by works. You cannot put a debt onto God. It is logically impossible. Hmm. And finally, oh, Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. Read that, think about it, and pray. And I hope that the Holy Spirit will grant you understanding and a change of mind and that you will be brought into the true church of Jesus Christ, not a church made by man. Okay, Sarah, I think we should leave it there. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. This has been How to Share the Gospel with Muslims, but also Roman Catholics. Yeah. <laughs> Thrown in at the end. Thank you, guys. Um, God bless you all. And um, again, CD, please email me. We'll be praying for you. Uh, we mean that in love and yeah. uh, we pray this has blessed you guys um so yeah yeah we love roman catholics we love muslims we want them to come to a true knowledge of who god is as revealed in the word of god peace out hashtag preach the army check it out and make sure to check out our other channel our other videos on the channel i think we're going to leave it there okay god bless bye god bless guys